Oh no! Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. Now then, we had a sharpening video uh, a week or so ago for the flat tools like the chisels and plain blades and things like that. Uh, today we're going to have a, a thing on keeping your carving chisels nice and sharp. So we can't really use the same technique as we did for the flat ones when we have curvy blades like this one. Uh, they don't fit in a jig for one, going straight away is just going to ruin it instantly. So how do we keep it sharp? How do we keep it uh, honed in for easy carving, which makes it easier for us to carve, but also gives us better, cleaner results as well. Let's dive in and have a look. Now where most people go wrong with sharpening is by leaving it too late in the first place. Um, so with often with uh, the flat chisels and the plain blades, you kind of wait until you can just feel it's dragging a little bit, it's not cutting like it used to and you decide, oh well I'm going to have to go back and sharpen it. Try and keep on top of that a little bit more, it just makes life easier. With these carving chisels, we need to make sure that we're sharpening before anything feels any different. We don't want to get to the point where you're having to smack it with a mallet just to get through the wood. All that's going to do is make it harder work for you, uh, more risk of damaging yourself as something slips, a uh, bigger chance of gouging yourself out of you, uh, but also it's going to give you a lesser quality of work. The sharper your tools, the smoother that curve's going to be with every slice. So we need to keep on top of these carving chisels and the way we're going to do that isn't with uh, sharpening stones or the papers that I like to use, it's by using a strop, just having it to hand and then keeping that blade horned all the way through. Let's have a look what a strop is. What is a strop? Well, basically it's just a chunk of leather. Um, I've got a kind of leather suede section that you'll, you'll always see me have on there. It makes it look a little bit uh, grippier. I could use this at a push. Um, I could literally just go through and roll that through there and that will work to polish up the edge. But, this is going to work better. So what I've done here is I've just took an old belt, an old proper leather belt, glued it to a chunk of wood. Um, let's see how left one side flappy. Okay, so we'll give you the reason for that in a minute, but that becomes quite useful. So we then glued that onto there, just super glued it on. And then we've got some polishing compound. Now you can get this in uh, red or green, I think it's different grades, it doesn't really matter. Some people will actually argue that the leather on its own will do a good job. I just think the polishing compound is just going to make it a little bit faster. So all I would ever do is just colour that in and then you can use that on your tool as you go through. Just a few strokes like that is all it takes to keep that edge beautifully honed. So what we try and do is keep this as a set. So we keep the leather strop on the block and keep the polishing compound with our roll of carving chisels. This way you know you're always going to have that to hand and we can just keep things toned up as we go along. Now then, someone has very kindly given me this old chisel. They found it in a toolbox somewhere that they had. Um, and it's obviously a carving chisel with a big gouge in it. That's a much deeper gouge than I have already. So this could be a very useful tool for me to have. And obviously someone's tried to keep it sharp right on the very end there. But the angle that we've got from here is really, really steep. And then it, it steepens even more as they've tried to keep that sharp. So what I want to do is take this heel off um, and I'm going to do that with the belt sander. Now this can be a little bit of a risky job if we go at it too hard. What we need to make sure is that you never let the, the metal on the end of here overheat. Because as soon as it does that we've lost its hardness. So if the ends ever start to glow we've ruined it. We need to strip it right back. Um, I'm not a blacksmith, I don't want to get anything like that kind of level of work to be done. Uh, so we keep a, a little glass of water next to us to keep plunging it in. Uh, generally, if you've got little beads of water on there while you're grinding it, if that water starts to bubble, it's time to come off, 
dip it in the glass again um, and cool it down. Right, so let's see if we can get that corner down and reduce this angle uh, to make it a little bit more like the back of that. Right, so before I even turn the grinder on, I need to know what angle to hold this at, okay? So I know that this is set at a nice angle, I like it, it works, and that is a two finger height on there to get me the correct angle. I'm not gonna get protractors out and start measuring things, let's just be practical. That distance there works well. So when I go on there to there, the blade is nowhere near touching that, so there's a lot of meat to come off here. Right, so I'm gonna use a two finger guide and then as it's turned on, I'm just going to keep rotating this way to make sure we get an even grind across. I'm not just going to concentrate on one bit at a time. It's got to keep moving at all times. So there we go, we can see it's taking off the correct chunk. It's definitely coming off that back side. So that's gonna lower the angle beautifully all the way down to there. It's when we get close to this leading edge that we need to be super careful because that's so thin, that will overheat very, very quickly. Right, so there we go. We've actually taken that right down to the wire by keeping it incredibly cool all the time, just constantly dipping it in the water. We've got through to the fact we've even got a tiny little burr. Just hear it that catches on your fingernail on the inside. So that means we've got right the way to the very, very edge. So now we've set that angle. That's brilliant. That's going to be a really usable tool. Uh, so now we need to polish this edge off. Okay, pointy isn't enough. Pointy is not sharp. Um, we're getting close, but it's not completely there. So we need to polish this edge. Uh, which is what we do regularly to the, the standard chisels that are already there. Um, and we'll see if we can polish this edge up as well. Uh, this is beautifully smooth. Um, it's just got a patina to it, which looks really nice. Um, but it is actually very, very smooth. There's no catches, there's no grooves in there at all. It's beautiful. Uh, so, yeah, next thing, polishing this. We're back to our sharpening station. So we used this before with the flat blades, didn't we? Using the the little jig and the marker stuff and running the blade backwards and forwards along these paints. Now I'm not going to do that with this. Okay, so I could go up and down turning as I go. The problem with doing that is it's going to just run a big dent in the sheet, isn't it? So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to work sideways. I'm going to set the correct angle and then rotate that way on. Okay, now some people will worry about scratch marks going in the wrong direction. We're polishing this to the nth degree, so it's gonna look like a mirror. There aren't gonna be any scratch marks in it by the time we finish. So we'll start with the heavier stuff um, and then work our way through the grades until we get to this one. This is the horning one. And then we'll go to the strop and make it really, 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 really sharp. And that's got us a very nice polished edge. If you think about it, the, uh, the whole of the blade was like this. And now we've got this really beautiful uh, workable edge on the end of there. Beautiful polish on that. Uh, now that looks like it's a much shallower angle uh, because of the size of that bevel. It's huge, isn't it? But what that is, is the thickness of the metal. Okay, so we've got the same angle at the points but the thickness of this 
just means that bevel goes on for longer. Okay, right. So that sorts the outside edge out. Well, what about this inside edge? A little bit trickier to do. Now on the well horn stuff that we've been using all the time, do you remember when we had our block and we've got this little flappy bit on the end? Well, that's what I use that for. So I can curve that over and run that across all the way down and it works through as we go through. So again, a little bit of polishing compound and that works well on there. That even works well when we have, let me just find, uh, that works especially well when we have these tighter curves. So this uh, really, really tight, look at that, it's beautiful. Um, that works really well just running that along there to polish that inside edge. Uh, with the V chisel like this, well, polishing the outside edges is very, very similar to the flat blades. Uh, we wouldn't put it in a jig, but we could do the same thing. And then that, again, that internal corner can just be run down that, that strip of leather to keep that well honed inside. It doesn't need doing anywhere near as often as the outside edges, by the way. Um, for something like this, well, we could use that. I think we need something a little bit more abrasive on here to get us going, to get us up to that standard that we're looking for. We've got a block of wood in the vise, and I'm going to use this chisel right onto that corner and smack it all the way down. So obviously now this, cor this corner that we've cut off perfectly matches the internal radius of our chisel. So what I'm going to do now is use some uh, metal polish. I'm sure you probably know what the brand is, but I'm not going to tell you. Uh, but it's just a, a metal polish that you can buy in a big tube, usually a gold tube. Um, and we're going to rub that on quite thick. Get it in the edges. And then we can run this up and down inside there to start polishing that off. Another option is to use one of these, just a little polishing wheel on the end of a drill. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. And again, just using the same um, polishing paste that comes out of the tube. We can then just work at that and polish away using this a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. You can do on the back side. Now that is a nicely polished chisel. So we've got a good shine on the inside. Yes, there's still some of that patina in there, but I don't mind that. Now, when we've worn the chisel back so far that we're getting to this kind of area, well, do you know what? I'll worry about that in 50 years time. For now, that will probably do. Well, let's test it out on a piece of wood and we'll find out. So the big question, is this sharp? That's one hand just pushing it into the wood. If that isn't sharp enough, well, I don't know what is. And let's see the result. There. Yeah. Can you see how smooth all of that into that feels? So it's glass-like. And that's the difference between a sharp chisel and a not sharp chisel. Right, so I hope that shows the importance of a sharp chisel. Okay, so we've taken something that was a bit rough uh, and to be honest would have needed smacking with a very large hammer for it to do anything to some wood to getting it to the stage where I can push that with one hand through. Now by the time you're holding that and you're working it, maybe like little taps, it's going to give you glorious results with ease. It's going to go through like a hot knife through butter. Okay, um, so the, the standard stuff, once you've got it to that stage, we shouldn't need to go back to any kind of a belt sander ever again with the same tool. Um, I wouldn't even want to go back to my sharpening uh, papers. Just keeping it honed 
on one of those just next to your work it's just sat there next to you you use it for a bit you go back and sharpen it you go back again and it should stay that sharp forever more just by using one of these okay um, if you ever find that you've got a little nick um, then we might go back to to grinding a little bit off and polishing it up again but that's going to be quite rare right well go and find a chunk of wood sharpen your tools and i'll see you soon